Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. Uh, as usual, we're keeping Soapy Pre-Op out of the studio. Uh, quick shout out to Jamie Abood. It is his birthday today, so we want to give a quick shout out to Jamie. Um, some sad news, too, of the passing of Jeremy Giambi, uh, who played for the Boston Red Sox uh, early 2000s. I think he's mostly known for the A's, but uh, RIP to him. But my guest this week, Daryl Martell. Daryl, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. It's good, good to have you here. Uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Um, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Manchester until I was about 13, and then we moved to Merrimack here, actually. Um, went to high school in Merrimack, graduated 2001. Um, went to college in Tennessee for a couple of years. That didn't work out too well, so I moved back home. Then I started working at uh, Liberty International Trucks. Just got bought out by Allegiance Trucks recently, so that's where I'm at now. Nice, nice. Now, Merrimack back then... It was, was there an upper elementary school, or is that some, more of a new thing? I don't know. So I didn't go to elementary school in Merrimack. I transitioned right when I was getting into high school. So okay. any of that elementary stuff, I was still <laughs> in Manchester. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Um, now, we, we're going to get into this a little bit. We know that you coach softball. You're my coach. That's why you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a good impression here. Um, what's three things that everybody should know about you? Three things that everything, everyone should know about me. Um, as you know, I love playing softball, uh, I love dogs, and I uh, love working out. Awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, what, do you have a dog right now? I do. How many? How many? Just one? I have one dog. His name is Cooper, short for Cooper's Town. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cooper S. Town is his official title on his uh, registration. Nice. Have you been there a few times? Cause... I, I've not been there, and I want to go. And I know you've discussed the, the Ortiz <laughs> thing, and I'm 100% uh, interested in getting down there with you, with some of our teammates, for uh, uh, inaugural David Ortiz uh, at Cooperstown. I, ha I highly recommend it. Um, it is a, like, you're going to get there, you're going to walk in the hall, and you're going to be like, oh, my God. I know. It, it I takes would, a breath away. That would be a kid in a candy store, yeah. I guarantee you. <laughs> what I can say is... Um, if you go down there, don't tell the wife what you spend, because you're going to be like, you, like, every time I, like, Mickey's place, right across from the hall, I go in there, and I'm like, all right, don't buy it, mm, but I'm on vacation, is how you feel, and you end up spending a lot, so. No, no, definitely, uh, I like that name of the dog very much. Our first dog's name was Fenway. Oh, okay. Yeah. So nice. Try to keep the baseball theme going. Baseball theme going. I like that a lot. Um. All right, keeping with the theme of the show, which is Let Freedom Ring. We ask this to everybody, and uh, we get a lot of different answers on this. Um, what does it mean to you to be an American? So, yeah, I was thinking about this a little bit. Um, and, and really what it boils down to me is, is the, the freedom aspect of it. Like, we are a free nation. Like, we, it, it, it blows my mind that... Uh, you know, what our, our forefathers and what those uh, who came before us have fought for and, and died for. They were, they were so adamant about uh, having that freedom that they would die for. And that, that's just, it's absolutely incredible to, um, to think about somebody would, would lay down their life so that we could, we could be free. No, I like that. I mean, we, we think about that, all the sacrifices that have been made. Uh, even if you go back to the Revolutionary War, like, they didn't do that. I mean, I'm not. I don't know if it, this would be horrible if we were all. Brit I don't. I don't want to be British. <laughs> but uh, like, could you imagine like if it didn't happen? I know. Like, what 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 does that look like? Right. You know. So so good answer. Um, we do want to get into your softball career here. Okay. And we got we got and we That's, got a lot. Of, you, you got a lot of fan questions <laughs> that we're gonna hit today. Oh, There's a lot of people want to know things about you. Um, but softball, how did you get into it? Now, did you play baseball growing up, or, like, how did you get into so, slow pitch softball? Uh, I loved baseball growing up. I played uh, Little League in Manchester. Absolutely loved it. Um, when, we, when we moved from Manchester to Merrimack, it was a little bit more difficult for me to get into the sports because, you know, as a kid, I didn't know a lot of people. I didn't feel comfortable just kind of jumping back in. So um, took a couple of years off of my baseball career. Tried to get back into it, but just couldn't couldn't keep up with the the kids and 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 you know not swinging for a couple of years kind of threw me off a lot. So I didn't have a lot of success uh, during high school baseball, but 
Um, then I, uh, you know, laid low for a few years, and in about, I think, 2008, I think, my church decided to get involved. It was Riverside Christian over here. Okay. Um, and they decided to get involved in the men's uh, softball league, and uh, I signed up, and I've just been in love with softball ever since. It's it's incredible. Awesome, awesome. Now, how does that, how does that work? Like, if it's at the church, like, is it during, like, uh, a mass, or, or, like, how do they, how do they start... I played CYO basketball. Mm -hmm. I was not good. I was a wrestler growing up. I just want people to know that. But I got recruited during CCD. How does how do how do they recruit adults for a softball team, like for ch church wise? So what we did was, um, you know, and I don't even know who the first person was to uh, get involved with this league. But um, you know, they just put an announcement in. We, you know, every week you'd get like a church bulletin with the announcements in it or whatever. And one, one week it said, hey, the church is putting together a softball team. If you'd like to sign up, sign up. And, <laughs> and there it is. So, and, uh, you know, we were terrible our first year. We were like 0-13 or something. <laughs> Nobody knew what they were doing. But, you know, as we've progressed and practiced and got a lot better and got a lot more fun. Yeah. Did a lot of people that you knew that they were going to the church sign up too? Like, like oh, yeah. how does that work? Is it like, hey, Johnny. Oh, you yeah, coming we, out for that too? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, that's what we did. We asked our friends and got, you know, uh, other people at the church involved, and then they got their friends involved, and it kind of expanded from there. So, oh, that's put together that's, a nice team. I like that. I, I like and, and 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 I play for your church team. I love the involvement of church and softball together. So it, it's cool to like, it brings people together. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best season that you've ever had? So the best season, uh, I gotta tell you, I'll be honest with you, the, the most fun season I've ever had was definitely last season when you, you joined our team. Um, last year's team was just, it was just such a special group of guys and it was just an incredible season from beginning to start. It didn't end the way we wanted it to, but uh, I think the bond that we had going with our team was just absolutely awesome. Um, the best season I ever had was probably when I left uh, Riverside Christian and started going, uh, my first uh, my first season as coach for MCC, I, it was probably my best season. I was seeing the ball well, hitting the ball well, everything was clicking. Um, just felt really, really good that season. And again, didn't end the way we wanted it to. You know, <laughs> we're, that championship was just out of reach for us, but uh, we'll get there, I think. We'll get there. I agree, and, and we know John Maskin wants to win that. He so bad. definitely <laughs> wants to. I have never seen a guy more hungry for a championship than that dude, so I would really love to win it for him, I'll tell you that much. I got, And I do agree. I think, uh, you know, when he asked me to play, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'd played in the church league before, and uh, I think we call ourselves the God Squad, but we were Main Street in, in Nashua. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll play, whatever. And I will say, I agree. What a great group of guys that is. Like, from our group chat to playing on the field, like, we just all have a lot of fun together. And I think that's, like, one of the best parts. Everybody clicks, and that's, that's the, like, the greatest thing about my, my softball career, um, just dating back to 2008 and, and onward, is um, the friendships that I've built over the years have just been absolutely incredible, you know. Starting off in the church league, and then we st I started expanding to, you know, um, what was it, NHSSC at the yeah, time, and then My Social, my social Sports, sports yep. and then got involved with tournaments, and you, you know, you just, you make new friends, and you get, you expand your, your, um, your field of play a little bit more, get involved in the tournaments and stuff, and it just turns into this big social circle, and, and all of a sudden I've got, you know, all these awesome <laughs> friends that it's just, it's just so much fun to be around all the time, so that's, that's one of the greatest things about softball is just the community that we have. I 100% I agree with that. I think I've, I've made, you know, some of my closest friends from playing softball and, and can't get enough of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, now, you have a tough job here. You know, you run, we were MCC, uh, now we're uh, one church, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, coaching isn't easy. It's not the easiest. It's, it's hard to get people to even want to do it. Um, how do you like coaching? How did you become a coach? So, how did I become a coach? I became a coach, um, so 
yeah, I've been playing for a long time. Um, finally decided to, it was a hard decision to leave Riverside, um, but I did switch churches and I was attending Manchester Church at the time, but I was playing with Riverside just because, you know, how you know it is, you, you build that bond with that team, you don't want to leave it. But um, eventually it, it got to the point logistically where it made more sense for me to play with MCC. Um, so that's that's what I decided to do. Um, and then uh, the co the current coach decided to step down and I kind of took over the reins. I, I figured, yeah, hey, I'll give it a shot. I've got experience. Why not? You know what? Um, and, and I absolutely love it. it I love uh, making the lineup. I love talking all the, you know, minuscule things that don't really matter. Yeah. But it's just it's just invigorating to me yeah. to talk about the little, you know, what if you move this guy to two and this guy to three or, you know, move this guy to this position and stuff. It's just it's just a fun conversation to have to always be engaged. Um, but, yeah, I, I love coaching. I love meeting with you guys and um, even even something that's like sending out the weekly emails. It's fun to type <laughs> something up and just encourage everybody and say, hey, what's up? You know, be here at this. Time. You know, it's just little stuff. I just like doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and we need that, you yeah. know, like uh, coaching to me can either be, there's, there's been times I've coached teams where it's like, this is miserable. Mm -hmm. But I think like, you know, the team we kind of have, it's, I think it's, it's gotta well, be more fun. That's the thing. You gotta, yeah. I gotta rephrase cause you gotta have the right group of guys. Yeah. I don't think I'd, I'd enjoy it if I didn't have the right group of guys. Right. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. And you got a great bookkeeper. Teresa's awesome. And you don't have to worry Love about that. Teresa. <laughs> Could not ask for anybody better than Teresa. She is the world, and she loves the team. She loves coming out and just enjoying the weather and enjoying being part of the group, and it's awesome to have her. She's a great part of the team. How, now, how did, how did she become the bookkeeper of the team? Like, uh, did you bribe geez. her? You know, or? I don't know. <laughs> so um, she loves the game. So her brother, um, her brother passed away. Um, a few years back and he was a big big softball player um so she would always enjoy going out watching his games and and um going to his stuff and uh i think she we just kind of reached out to her and said hey do you want do you want to be you know part of our team we're looking for somebody to keep the books and i think you know she kind of does it in honor of her brother and to to participate in the uh you know the fun that we have together and and she used to put together a um a tournament in honor of her brother, the Keith Trombley Memorial yes. Tournament, which was yep. a great, great tournament. Um, you know, hopefully it, it sees the light of day again because that's a lot of fun. I think a um, lot so, of teams. And, yeah. And I can say, I, I, I never knew him. I've only known Teresa, but I know he was loved by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of T-shirts made for him. Like, the, a lot of the, I think he made, did he play for Jade? Uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure I'm what not sure, teams but he there, played There's for. been a lot of people on Facebook that I've seen there are like, this guy was awesome, and you know, yeah. sometimes tragedies yeah. happen. But so yeah, I think it's just something special that she enjoys and gets her out of the house, and we love her. Yeah, so. very happy to have her, yeah. Teresa. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for because <laughs> doing the book is like, if the coach has to worry about that too, it causes like you have more to worry about. Uh, yeah. You know, I. I hated doing the book. And then she can be the scapegoat. Like, so if something <laughs> is messed up in the book, it's her fault, not yeah. my fault. So. <laughs> there you go. Well, the bookkeeper. Um, let me see here. Um, we're going to ask some, some tougher questions here. Let's go. What's the best part of being the coach? The best part? Uh, I think we covered that. All right. I think the best part is being, being with an awesome group of guys and just, you know, encouraging them and, and growing with them and seeing how, how they they progress in their in their softball career. I like I like seeing guys come up and uh, you know like Dave or Frank or um, you know Dave has only been with us for a couple of seasons but you can see you can see him getting into it and and working on his swing and really coming through. Um, I'm really excited about seeing Frank for another season. Yeah. Once he slows his swing down a little bit and gets his timing right, he's going to wreck the ball. And I'm excited. I like to see my players grow. Uh, Frank was a good pickup. Where do we find oh, him? Man, that's Dave. It's yeah, all Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> and, and I think we only had him for a little bit yeah. of the year. So I'd <clears throat> like to see how he, he progresses. Uh, I think he's going to be a great player. Um, all right, now the two tough questions here. We're going to ask, what's your least favorite part of coaching? But what's the most difficult part? But first, what's just one thing that when you're a coach, you're like, 
I hate this part. I know this is a tough question. You could say you love it all, but there's got to be something. I hate the part, the, the five minutes before the game starts when I don't know who's showing up to the game. That <laughs> yes. is the worst feeling. When I'm sitting there waiting, like, okay, who are we going to have tonight? Yeah. <laughs> are we going to have ten players? Are we going to have nine players? I don't know. Yeah. And then you look at your text messages, and, you know, five minutes after the game starts, you got guys saying they're not going to show up. So that's, I hate having to pull teeth to get guys to show up. Yeah. That's, that's the worst part, I think. I absolutely love that answer because as a coach, too, I have felt that. <laughs> we're like, okay, they're not here yet. They're asking for my lineup. Uh, how can I stall this yeah, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, how do you keep people accountable for a rec sport? It's like, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's almost impossible. Um, what's the most difficult part? Uh, the most difficult part? Um, probably keeping everybody level-headed and on the same page, um, trying to calm down guys when things don't go their way or if there's a bad call or, you know, keeping people, keeping people under control. Sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. So making sure everybody's attitude is, is, uh, is in the right place and everybody's focused on the same goal. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. Now, in church ball, we want to say, there is no swearing is unacceptable. It's hard. You cannot <laughs> somehow. I didn't get suspended in the first game because we all, you know. How do you? How is that for a coach where you're like, oh man, please don't say the wrong thing because this league will suspend you. Uh, does that ever like cross your mind? Like, am I going to lose somebody over? Oh yeah, absolutely. Every yeah. every week, every <laughs> week. That's the first thing I say to you guys before we go out on the field. Guys, just don't swear. Yeah. Just don't. I know it's hard. Just don't swear. It's difficult though, and I get it. I get it. I mean, I, I did uh, I had the first game of the season last year. I think I grounded out four times in a row. Uh, where I came in where I was like, I'm new to this team. I got to impress these guys. Like, I want them to think, like, I'm a, you know, I think I'm a good ball player. I want to show that. And I grounded out for the, f I don't know, fourth time. And I think I let it, I just went. And I wasn't swearing at anybody, but I let it rip. And the other team's like, oh, my God. And, you know, I'm yeah. gonna go, all right, I'll repent, I'll repent. You know, like. Uh, I am a religious guy. Do I attend church all the time? No, but I do. My faith is very important to me. And the only issue I had was like, don't tell me that I'm a bad Christian because I swore. Yeah, I'm no, not. no, nobody <laughs> wants to do that. Yeah. So the realization is that you're you're representing a church. You're out there with a church's name on your jersey, right? So you're you're out there and you're represent. Repre you're a representation of that church body when you're out on the field with that church jersey on. So, you know, you don't want, uh, I'm sure the church doesn't want a bunch of guys running around the yeah. softball field dropping F-bombs with their shirt, <laughs> yeah. you know, with their name on their back of their jersey. So, you know, that's, that's the crux of the rule, I guess. You no, know? and I totally <clears throat> get it. You don't want people to just, you know, it goes on in other leagues. There's a lot of things I've noticed in other leagues that are unacceptable. Um, Sometimes in the church that you're like, all right, can we get a pass here? But I, I totally get the rule. I respect the rule. Um, and uh, it's what makes it a little bit different, yeah. too. So don't swear in the church. <laughs> uh, we got, you got a lot of fan questions, so we're going to get to these here. First from the birthday boy, Jamie Abood. Jamie. Uh, who is uh, his favorite player on, one, on the one church team? So does it have to be player? I mean, I was going to just say Teresa. I mean, she's my favorite, hands down. I don't really like any of you guys, but uh, <laughs> I'll go with Teresa for that one. I mean, she makes your job a little bit easier. <laughs> That's absolutely. You know, the rest of us make your job harder. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, from Brian Van Blargen. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. And Brian, we need you in the playoffs. I think he would have made a huge difference if we had him pitching. He's a great pitcher. Braves fan. I don't know. I, I have to ask him how he's a Braves fan. How can you not be a Braves fan in the early 90s, though? Well, that's, like, that's the thing. Like, I always did, but I always knew I, I was a Red Sox fan. But you could watch the Braves on TBS. Yeah. But I could never pick the Braves or the Red Sox. Yeah. He, he did. He, oh. mm, see, yeah, that's no good. See, I still rock Braves. I still wear <laughs> Braves stuff, but the Red Sox are my team. Yeah. Would you put the Braves over the Red Sox? No, absolutely not. I will say one other quick fact. Uh, my grandmother was a Boston Braves fan, and wow. she never got over them leaving. And she was a Yankees fan because the Braves left until 2004. 
And then my grandmother also was on the Red Sox bandwagon. There you go. That's uh, all it takes is a World Series. I love you, Nana. Rest <laughs> in peace. But you were a flip-flopper. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're Red Sox nation. Um, he wants to know, uh, what will you be, uh, when will you be reaching out to his agent about his contract extension? Well, listen, I need a, I need a commitment from his agent that he's going to show up and be able to pitch at some of these important games. I mean, I can't have him going off every other weekend to see his lady friend and not pitching for me. Um, so once that's all squared away, I'm happy to talk to his agent. Yeah, Brian, we need, we need you, Brian. It's, you got to be there. You know, I, I think he's, I think he's a great pitcher. I mean, we don't want to be throwing Maxson out on the mound every week, right? No, no, we don't. No diss to John Maxson. <laughs> uh, we need Brian on the mound. <laughs> uh, so, Brian, I think, I think it's pretty simple. No contract extension until we know you're going to be there every week. Brian, please don't let us put Maxson on the mound. Yeah, we should refrain from that. But <laughs> I, will, I will give John this. He actually, I, I can't remember the game, but I, I'm no, pretty sure I'm, we, he, did we win? he came through for did Grace. We win that he came game? through. We were we were struggling against Grace, yeah. and he came on in and he stepped up big time during that game. So, pitching you know, is when we get down to third or fourth in line for pitchers, I'm, I'll throw him out there. Have you ever had to go out on the mound? Uh, not in any kind of situation where the game meant anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it is the worst. Yeah. It is legitimately, I have not pitched in probably about 10 years. No. no I, think I, I think I pitched in a, my social sports in 2011, right? Yeah. Pitching sucks. It takes a special person. It really does. Yeah. And, and Brian, that's why we need you. <laughs> that's right, dude. Let's go. <laughs> yes. uh, Anthony Amato, former guest, we've talked about this. He faked a stroke uh, oh, on God. air here uh, on Let Freedom Ring before. How did you handle it? I didn't know what to do. And I was looking at Justin uh, behind. I was like, I, I don't know. And then all of a sudden he came to He's like, I'm just joking. I was like, oh, thanks, Anthony, for that. You just gave me a heart attack. Um, if you had a blooper reel for, from your softball career, what would be in the top three? Uh, I mean, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> like, I, I, you could just do a, a montage of my overthrows. I've got a total case of the yips, dude. I don't know what the deal is, but... Uh, yeah, I, I can't make a throw to save my life, but you know what? Whatever it is, what it is. Um, thinking about this, I think one of the worst ones was uh, bases loaded situation. I was playing second base, um, two outs, and I th we were ahead by a couple runs or something. And um, line drive to me, had it in my glove, pops out, everybody's safe. Next batter hits a grand slam. That would have been out number three, and we would have won the game. But, you know, that was the worst one I, that I can think of. I mean, there's, there's so many over my career, dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ask Anthony. He'll tell you. I mean, I've, I, I played a tournament one time, and I struck out three times in one game. That was you know pretty, what? That he, was pretty bad. Is that in there? Yeah, I'm sure that's in there somewhere. something about that. That, uh, that one will, will die with me. Yeah. What's going through your mind when that happens? Is it just, you just is don't that know. a like, block? Yeah, you, yeah. like, you just, like, it happens once, and you're like, okay, that was weird. Yeah. Then it happens the second time, you're like, oh, boy, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so then you get up there, your third time up, and you're like, I want to do anything but strike out. Yeah, and then yeah. you just end up striking out, and you're just like, oh, what, and, what, and what I, can you do? It's like <laughs> I wasn't there. I'm going to guess there's hecklers at this point. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and then you know becomes, the guys we play with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did bring that up. Uh, did I have that? I don't think I had that in there, but... Oh, no, he did. Yeah. But thank you, Anthony, for yeah. that. <laughs> it does happen. Uh, three times, four times. That's a lot, but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we, have some, we have several questions from uh, uh, David Sanders. David, okay. okay. And he, he commented right on the Let Freedom Ring page. So, David, we uh, appreciate your support. Um if you could play on any golf course in the world, what would it be? That's his first. He has, he has, he has a few here. Any golf course in the world. Um, Pebble Beach would be awesome, but I'm a guy who likes like the scenery. And I'm sure Pebble Beach is, is beautiful, but I saw this YouTube video, and I, I don't know the name of the course, but they were playing on this course in Hawaii, and it was just fantastic i mean there's just mountains and volcanoes and like oh, tropical wow. trees everywhere i would i would love to play that course i gotta figure out the name of it though. 
So to be determined. Uh, yeah. We'll get yeah. we'll get the name on that. Um, let's see. He also says, if you were the GM for the Patriots this year, what moves would you make to get them another ring? Probably a lot well, of moves. That is a loaded <laughs> question, man. <laughs> I don't know. Can we get Brady out of retirement yeah. here? Get him back? And... Could you imagine? I, there's a lot of work. Yeah, it's... That, that uh, needs to be done. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of want to ask this. I mean, if we didn't have the quarterback all these years, like, I mean, there were some really good teams. Does any of this happen? Like, five, you know, six Super Bowls? Like, so you're saying if we didn't have Brady? Let's say we didn't have Brady, but we had... Let's, let's be honest, those Super Bowl teams were good teams all around. But if we didn't have the quarterback, are they winning the Super Bowl? Let's say, you know, obviously, and I was a supporter of Cam Newton, those teams aren't winning with Cam Newton. No, I'm going to have to agree with you. I don't, I don't think, um, you know, maybe one or two of them. Yeah. But I don't think they get as many as they did with Brady for sure. I mean, that's, you know, they... I don't think it's a 50-50 split between Belichick and Brady. You know, I mean, Belichick is a great coach, smart, smart guy, um, great football mind. But you got to have the guy on the field making the throws. You know what I mean? I agree with that. I, I wonder in that first dynasty, and this is going to be a question forever, and we're going to get to the rest of these in a second, but could Bledsoe have won those other Super Bowls? I wonder. Would the Patriots in 2001 have won with Drew Bledsoe? You know, they were talking about that in the, what was it, the, the 30 for 30 episode with yeah. the, the tuck well, rule. Yeah, well, Brady said if I would have lost the tuck Yeah, and he would have been the backup yeah. to Bledsoe, right? Um, does Bledsoe go out and win a Super Bowl? I don't know. That's a tough one. That's really tough. Because, you know, like, let's say Brady's not the quarterback, but, like, we had Drew Bledsoe for the next six years or whatever it was. Could he have done it? He got there before. I mean, he was in the Super Bowl before there was a Tom Brady. So, discussion for another time. But I am, it makes you wonder. I think Bledsoe was a pretty damn good quarterback. He was, but Brady's just so He's good. not Brady. No, He's no. just so good, dude. He was unbelievable, and uh, I hope Mac Jones can, <laughs> can do it. Um, what is your favorite chick flick, and how many times have you watched oh, it willingly? My, um, my favorite chick flick. I don't know if I have a favorite chick flick. I guess, have you seen Outlander? I mean, that's kind of a chick flick. I haven't seen it's it. It's like but... a love story, like a time-traveling love story. It's it's more of a, it's not a, uh, a movie, but it's a series on stars. Uh, I've watched that a couple of times with my wife. And she loves it. She's read all the books and watched it three times. I've watched it a couple of times. So. Probably that. Yeah. I mean, I... Not, not Fifty Shades of Grey, is that No, a... I never, <laughs> uh, never got into that one. <laughs> I do, uh, I do like a chick flick, but I also think it's a, a masterpiece of a movie. Uh, when Harry Met Sally, I think I I've only seen, seen that it. once, and that was, I think, when I was dating my wife like twenty years ago. I, I think that's like the ultimate chick flick because it's like, you know, people talk about the Notebook being the the great love story. When Harry Met Sally is a better love story, in my opinion. Uh, Meg Ryan. Uh, uh, Chris, what's up? Billy Crystal? Billy Crystal, yeah. yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. That's movie. really the only thing I remember is that it had Billy Crystal in it. It's a great movie. Honestly, if you want to watch a movie with your wife, it's a love story. That's the one to watch. In my opinion, I'm going to stand by that. Um, he also wants to know, and again, Dave had a lot of questions here. Uh, what makes you unstoppable? <laughs> I'm not sure what he... <laughs> uh, what makes me unstoppable? Is there any kind of context to this? I don't just know. Unstoppable I'm not sure. in general, because I'm pretty—I'm a pretty stoppable guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, I, Dave. That's a great question. Um, what makes me unstoppable? If I had some superpowers, maybe that'd be cool. Um, I don't understand the question. I guess, Dave. We're gonna have to have you rephrase that uh, I'll ask at him. some point. We're gonna get to the bottom of that. Um, then he wants to know. Bucket list you want to accomplish? Oh, that's a this good seems question. like a little easier. Of a yeah, question. <laughs> uh, so many things. I want to go to Cooperstown. Never been there. Um, travel. I want to go to New Zealand. Okay. I've never been there, and it just looks like it's a beautiful, beautiful place. 
Um, so those are a couple of things. Um, ultimately, I would like to see a baseball game at every park in oh, the United States. Yes. I think that would be uh, an awesome. Do you awesome. have any stadiums already checked off? Besides Fenway, obviously. Fenway and the new New York Stadium. I think that's it. Yeah, all I have is the Nationals and Red Sox. Yeah. And I, I said that in my early 20s. I was like, I'm going to go to every stadium. Yeah. And now I'm Sounds 37. Sounds good on paper, I'm like, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, running that time here. <laughs> and I will say, with Cooperstown, we oh, could be there in six hours. I went to right Tampa, now. too. I've been to oh, Tampa been, Okay. Yeah. Um, I actually was only an hour away from Tampa, and I was like, I was sitting on a beach. Going, my brother was like, dude, we can go right now. We're going to leave uh, his wife and the kid there. And we both went, ah, I don't want to sit inside and watch a baseball game. Like the beach, I wish it was outside. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's something about, I don't like, because I, I, we went to uh, Olympic Stadium yeah. to watch the Red Sox, a preseason, uh, uh, spring training game. And I was like, someone watching baseball indoors is not cool. Like it's just, yeah, the trop is we it's weird. Yeah, it's like, like I look at it on TV and go, <laughs> I don't want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's a nice place, and it's like, but it is weird to like you got all that stuff up top, and uh, it's just a it's a different atmosphere from somebody who's used to going to Fenway Park yeah. every time he goes to a ball game to going inside like a air conditioned unit that's all on top of everything. Yeah, I don't, like, I, I, okay, like, basketball, fine. Hockey, fine. But, like, I don't want to watch football inside. I don't want to watch baseball inside. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be outside. Yeah, you know? right. Um, which is worse, uh, cauliflower, popcorn, or greens at Kirby's? At Kirby's? Okay, so let me give you some context okay. on this question. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so here's my thing. I have a, a huge gripe about people who call foods not what they are. Okay. You know what I mean? So like you make mashed potatoes, it's mashed potatoes. But when you mash up cauliflower and put a little like, I, don't, I can't believe it's not butter on it, that's not mashed potatoes. But people are no. like, oh, that's cauliflowered mashed potatoes. I'm like, no, it's just mashed cauliflower. Okay. And I, I, I can't stand cauliflower in general. So that's the context of the question. Now, the, what was the... Which, he's second? asking what's worse. Or pop, he said popcorn or greens at Kirby. Okay. So popcorn is like my favorite food of all time. If uh, somebody made cauliflower popcorn, I'd be very, very upset. <laughs> That's an absolute disgrace. Okay. Um, the greens, that, so every, every summer, um, me, Dave, and a few of my other friends, we go on a, a, a golf trip called the Weekend of Freedom. And it's just eight guys just playing golf and just having the time of their life. And there's there's very few golf courses out there that let you tee off eight at a time and just, you know, Go not give it. a crap of what yeah. you're doing out on the course. <laughs> uh, there's this one place in northern Vermont called Kirby's Golf Land, and it is the most uh, distraught golf course you'll ever see. I mean, the golf carts are all taped up and there's <laughs> no, you know, it's all one cut. And uh, we went there this past year and the greens were just baked it looked like you were playing on the moon it was just craters everywhere and the ball was not rolling it was like playing plinko so the greens were really really bad at kirby so uh if i had to pick um i think cauliflower popcorn would be worse because at least when i'm playing golf even though it's at kirby's and the greens are really terrible i'd be having fun playing golf yeah but i would never have fun eating cauliflower popcorn yeah i wouldn't i don't think so, I, would, I would either yeah now, are you do you all like so popcorn's your like favorite thing? I love popcorn. Do you have a machine at home by any no, chance? No. Oh, I've got an air popper at home. Okay. But not like one of those. Because you can ones. you can get them fairly decent prices. Yeah. You know, surprisingly. And there's something about popcorn out of an actual machine. Oh, yeah. That's like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex Lambrulis wants to know uh, could Babe Ruth play today? And he's been going on about this, this a lot. I mean, so. honestly, this is such an interesting question, though. It, and, and I think it needs some context, because could Babe Ruth play today? He could play. I don't think he would be very good. But if you're putting this in context, could he play today if he had the same training as the guys? That's and good, this was brought up point. in our chat, yeah. and, and I thought it was a really great point. If he had... Um, the training and the the uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for here. Um, regiment. Or... The regiment and the um, you know the science behind everything yeah. that we have now. Um, 
could he play? I, I think so. I, he he must, be, must be able to because he's, he had such a natural ability back then, right? So imagine that natural ability plus all of the advancements in technology that we have today. So if you're, if you're factoring those technological advancements into the game with him, then yes, he absolutely could succeed. If you're talking about putting Babe Ruth into a lineup you know, from back then without any of that, I don't think he'd, he'd be able to shake a stick at it. Because you've got to keep up with the times, too. So it's like it's really hard to figure that out because an athlete's an athlete, mm -hmm. no matter what year it was. So, so what are you saying, Alex? Everybody then sucked and they couldn't, they couldn't keep up? Like, it's not that they sucked. It's just that it's, it's advanced so much yeah. since then. Everything is, has been uh, studied and, and expanded upon, and every aspect of the game is analyzed now. Um, that wasn't before, so it's such a different, uh, different time now than it was back then. So, I think the athlete probably could though. Like athletic ability is there; you don't have it. So, if you, like you said, if you have the training and everything, then I think you could. So, wouldn't it, that's a very interesting debate. There, yeah, that's a great topic. Um, Dave wants to know, and I'm, I didn't even put Dave's last name because I'm like I don't want to butcher. We'll call it, it Dave B. Yeah, Dave, Dave, <laughs> Dave uh, Boyce. <laughs> I don't want to upset it. him again. I'll butcher I, it. You know, get uh, him on the show so we can teach you how to say it right. Well, I'm a Frenchman too. He goes, "It's a French last name." I go, "Oh, my bad, Dave. I, I don't know how to say your name, but we'll practice on that." Um, which baseball player, in your opinion, is has had the best batting stance? The best batting stance, or was it? Okay. Uh, I mean, it's got to be Griffey, right? Mm, that was beautiful. It's yeah. just such a good, good form, good swing. Um, it was just it was something to marvel at whenever he, he took a swing at the ball. It's, you know who else has a really good swing, just like form-wise, is uh, Ben Attendee. Oh, ben, yeah. Ben, I can't say his yeah, name. Yeah, no, Ben Attendee's ben, right. Ben yeah. Like, if you ever just, like, watch his swing, it's just it's so so smooth, right? Um, and it's, it's funny because you compare that to somebody like David Ortiz, and nothing against David Ortiz, but... His swing was just so violent, right? Yeah. It's just he's just trying to mash the ball. But uh, there's something to be said about a nice, like, smooth swing that's just pretty and just drives the ball. You know what I mean? No, I agree. I mean, my favorite ever is Mark McGuire. If anybody yep. sees the way I stand in the box, I watch Mark McGuire a lot as a kid. The sweetest swing I ever saw in Boston was Manny. Yes. Manny had it's, it, it was something smooth. about that. Yeah, it was just. He, he made it seem effortless, right? Yeah. He, <clears throat> oh, God. And, you know, and we don't, want to, we don't want to go down the road today about the steroids guys, but another guy that's like, God damn it, I want him <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. Um, John Madison wants to know, uh, Daryl, why are you such a good coach? <sighs> I've got good players. I mean, I've got people like you, <laughs> like Maxim, like Van Blargan, Dave, Frank, Alex. Jamie, oh crap! I'm gonna get crap for forgetting somebody. Yeah, gonna remember you know? everybody. So, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> but no, it's the it's the group of guys that I've got uh, around me that um, you know you're only as good as the the people in your presence. So. I think I think we're we're a team of destiny. I think it can happen, um, and I know Maskin wants that to happen more than anything. Like we know that he also wants to know who is your favorite athlete of all time and why. Ooh. It's got to be Brady. I mean, I, he just changed everything. Literally it, everything, it, not it, just it, the Patriots. Right. Like you, winning in this area. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it was just such an unbelievable story, the way he did it again and again and again. And you think he's done, and he comes back and does it again. And it's like, you, you can't make this up. Like, you couldn't have written this story. Like, it, it, I, I think that's the answer to that question. I, I don't see any other. I don't even see any other person in the running, to be honest with you. Well, let me ask you this, because I have a, Brady's my number two favorite athlete of all time. My number one is because of what I felt he meant to the region. Who means more New England, David Ortiz or Tom Brady? Ooh. Oh, I love Ortiz so much too. And I, I will say why I say Ortiz because I was there the day they said this is our bleeping city and nobody gonna dictate our freedom and I went, 
That's my guy. I, that's my guy. <laughs> you, you know, that's such a good Not that Brady point, had like, the opportunity to do that, but. Ortiz, every time he got up to the bat, up to bat, man, like, you just knew something was going to happen. Like, there's not been a better clutch hitter in the game of baseball than David Ortiz. Um, I was at the game where he, uh, against Detroit, where Torrey Hunter went head over heels. Oh, the bullpen catch? Uh, that, the bullpen cop? Yeah, that was uh, the most. I got a picture with him. I, yeah, yeah. Being there at that moment was is, is probably the best sports experience I've ever had in my life. Fenway was shaking, oh, man. and it was just unbelievable. Um, I'm pretty, I tore up my living room at that point. Oh, yeah. I was like, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. Like, the whole park was just going up and down, and it yeah. was just an awesome ride. Um, but, yeah, he, he definitely uh, put Boston on his back and, and you know, Brought him, brought him a trophy. So he, see, I, I see why you. Why I you feel can say like that. he genuinely loves this place. That's that's Th true. I think yeah. that's my, and I love Tom Brady, but I don't feel like Tom loves the region like David Ortiz does. Like David Ortiz is like New England's my home. You see ex how excited he was when the Patriots won their Super Bowls. Like he became one of us. Tom Brady wore a Yankees hat. But you gotta, I, 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 I'm just saying. So, <laughs> you know? I love what, Tom what's Brady. The, what's the question, though? The question is... Uh, this was a sidetrack question. Your the, favorite the, athlete. The, the favorite yeah. athlete, right? So you, if you take the hometown bias out of it, then it's I guess, easy. yeah. Okay. Because, right. I, I mean, I've gone on record to say, and everybody knows how I feel about Michael Jordan, I say Tom Brady's the greatest athlete of all time, not Michael Jordan. I'm going to agree with you. So... Very, very good questions uh, here, John. We already talked about the striking outs, though. It's going to just keep coming up again. again. We'll get into sports here. we got a pretty cool Super Bowl coming up. Yeah. I mean, we love the Patriots being in it, of course, but it's not. It's the Bengals. It's the Rams. A lot of good stories coming out of this. Um, what's your prediction? Who you, who you got winning? What's your score? Uh, it's, it's a tough one. I think the resiliency of the Bengals might might be able to pull it off. I don't think it's going to be um, an excessively high-scoring game. Um, maybe 24-21 Bengals. I'm also picking the Bengals. Yeah. I, I think, but, you know, but part of me goes, Matthew Stafford, like, this is, like, it, this is go time, man. Yeah. The, the Rams made this trade for a reason, and either you are going to do this and we're going to forget about everything that happened in Detroit. Not that he was a bad quarterback there, but it was a horrible franchise. But then you go, man, this Bengals team seems like a team of destiny. Mm -hmm. just yeah, just the way everything's clicking for him right now. It's they beat the like Chiefs. You can't, you can't. How the hell did the Chiefs collapse like that? <laughs> like, in my opinion, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. Uh, yeah. What? How did that happen? Like... He looked awful in that last the, half of that game. I, I just, I don't understand. I, I don't know what happened there. Like, I remember going to halftime being like, all right, Chiefs are going to win this game. But also, I remembered the week prior where the games were insane. And I was like, well, maybe the Bengals still have a shot. But as the game went on, I was, I was like, no, the Chiefs. And then we, we get to the end of the fourth quarter. Then we get to overtime. I go, the Chiefs have the ball? In OT? <laughs> they didn't win the game? Like, I don't know. what? So, I'm, like, part of me, I'm going to say bang, uh, Bengals uh, 28, Rams 20. They feel like it's a team of destiny right now. Mm -hmm. Because you just beat, in my opinion, the best team in the league, which is the Chiefs. Yeah. But Stafford's going to have something to say about it for sure. I mean, this could be his only shot. You think he's going to ever get back again? No. Yeah. So. No, I don't. <clears throat> I do think uh, Sean McVay is an amazing coach, a young coach. Um and the Rams went out and, like, they have to win now. But they don't, they feel like the, uh, how do I put this? Well, Hollywood team, you know, from L.A. They've spent all this money to get the, the best players. And I feel like the Bengals just have that grit that they're just going to go out and beat this, this team. It, 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 it feels like, and I don't want to get hate for this, 2001 Patriots. Yeah, it does have that kind of flair to it. You know? Mm-hmm. So we, we will see. Um, Tom Brady has a podcast, as you probably know. 
he gets asked the question, uh, are you really retired or something along those lines? He goes, never say never. Do you think uh, we'll see Tom Brady play football again? No. He's got to say that. He's got, he's got an identity to uphold. He's got a brand to keep um, you know, pressing. Uh, he's got to say that kind of stuff. I think, just out of uh, publicity. Now, I know he's older than Brett Favre at this point, when Brett Favre did this little dance. I think there's a chance. Really? I, you know, he's such a competitor. Like, is there that chance that he's like, I find the right thing and I come back? It'd be... Do you not, think his wife would let him? That I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I am with Giselle. Like, all right, enough, Tom. You, what, you've had 22 more, years What more could he ask for, you know? What, what, is, what more does he have to prove, I guess? I think it's an addiction. Yeah? I think it's an addiction. It's like, you know, he's playing at a high level. I could never give up softball. Yeah. But again, you can be out of shape and do that sport. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I, I think I'm with you. I think he does. But the right opportunity comes. I don't think it's with the Bucks. No. I don't think it's with the Bucks, but I, I, I wonder if the right thing comes along and he's just like, all right, you know. Uh, Tuka Rask uh, retires uh, yesterday, longtime goalie of the Bruins. I've said this on the show. I'm not a diehard Bruins fan, but I, I enjoy, I'm always going to root for the Bruins. I'm a New England guy. Uh, anything about Tuka Rask that sticks out for you? I mean, he... he I was a baller. I'm not a huge hockey fan. I do have to say that playoff hockey is one of the most exciting things to watch so ever. So much fun. Oh, man. Um, but I haven't gotten to the point where I'm committed to, like, regular season play. So uh, I'm totally just kind of a fair weather guy when it comes to the knowledge of the Bruins and stuff like that. That said, um, when the Bruins were in the playoffs, I really enjoyed watching Tuca play. Um, my, do my wife was in labor in... 2019 when uh, they were in that, um, was it the Stanley Cup Finals? With the Blues? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I was, was watching. I think it was. Yeah, so I was watching, uh, you know, the finals games while my wife was having my kid. That was fun. Oh, could have won that <laughs> one. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Tuca was, has been a big part of that team for many, many years. And it's the story of him trying to come back, but he just can't because of the injury is like, it's heartbreaking. And that, um, you know, putting that in perspective, if that were ever to happen to, to me or one of us or where, I, and that almost happened to you with your shoulder injury, yeah. right? Like, I, I'm so glad you were able to come through that and play ball again because, you know, when you're struggling through that kind of stuff and the sport means that much to you, um, it's got to be difficult. And it must be really difficult for Tuca. And I, and I know what it's like to retire. My retirements weren't true. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I've, I've appreciated everything he's done here. I, I, obviously, uh, Tim Thomas was the guy that, that won the Stanley Cup or was there, and that hard to believe that's 12 years ago or 11 years ago. Um, but, yeah, Tuca, Tuca was great. And uh, I, good luck with everything, Tuca Rask. Uh, the lockout, still going on, but Major League Baseball announced today, and I, I want to get your take on this, the National League's going to have a, uh, a designated hitter as well. I did not hear that. That yeah. came out today? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't looked at the news yet. I miss wow. Bud Selig. I'm just going to say it. I hate Manfred. Really? <laughs> I mean, this is an interesting point, though. Like, And it's something I've struggled with for years. Because like, like, I think you know, the, the pitcher should be able to hit the ball. Um, but I like the DH. Well, of course. I mean, David uh, Ortiz is my favorite right. athlete. That, I mean, he has no job. <laughs> the, 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 you don't want to see like a big spot, like the game on the line, and you have to decide whether to keep your pitcher in the game or bring in somebody who can smash the ball. I don't think that should be like a pivotal decision in a in a in like a in a game. You know what I mean? See, but I, I guess what I always loved was the difference between the American League and the National League, and now that strips it. The problem with that is, so the difference was great before they had interleague play. True. With, we're, we're with the well, addition of interleague play, and these teams are playing each other more and more between the American and National League outside of the World Series, then the appeal of the DH, I think, is... is um, uh, more gratifying for the National League, I think. I think no, I think you're right there because interleague play is 
that goes back to like 97 at this point. Yeah. There's people in their early 20s that that's all they've known. Mm -hmm. like, when we were growing up, that didn't happen. It was right. the World Series was the only time you'd actually see that happen. So. And, and, and at that point, it was exciting to see your pitcher try to hit the ball. Yeah. And now it's, you, you don't want to see that. But uh, I, I, yeah, you might have just, you might have just changed my mind on that. <laughs> glad, I, glad I could talk some sense into yeah. you. Uh, let's get into blank versus blank. I'm going to give you two things. You've got to pick one and tell me why. Uh, first one, we're going to go 90s grunge here. Nirvana or Pearl Jam? Nirvana. Didn't even blink on that. Pearl Jam's boring. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm, I agree with you. I like Nirvana better. Uh, man, they could have done so much more music. And, and, yeah. and to see Dave Grohl go on to make another band that's a Hall of Fame band, like, very crazy. Um, Tupac or Biggie? So I've never really been into rap, so I really can't say one or the other. Really? No, I, I'm not familiar enough with... Uh, never heard either of them. I mean, I probably have. I, I couldn't... I'm going to be completely honest with you. John Massey is going to comment you know, on I, this. I know Probably it. Anthony, too. I mean, <laughs> oh, Anthony, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, that's fine. <laughs> more more uh, responsible for the success of the New England Patriots over the last 20 years. We ask this a lot. Tom Brady or Bill Belichick? Brady. Tell me why. Because Brady's the one out there throwing the ball. He's making the passes. He's making the plays on the field, reading the defense in real time. Um, he's responsible for the movement, getting the ball down the field. You can draw up plays all you want. You can have these great um, you know, ideas and write it down on paper, but you need somebody to execute it. All right. No, I... I it's It's... I'm starting, I'm starting, I will always back Belichick, but the more people are starting to sell me on. He's a great coach. He, he's literally, yeah. he's, I, I, I think he's the best coach in the league, hands down. I don't really think there's any debate about that. But I still don't think he could have done what he did without Brady. You need the players to execute. I, I could be the best coach of all time, make the perfect lineup, but if my players don't execute, then nothing, nothing's going to happen, right? It, and I think that, and we've kind of touched on this, he would have had some good years with Drew Bledsoe. Mm -hmm. Who the hell would have been the next guy? We have no idea. So it's such a tough question, and I love that question because I love the Patriots. But would you rather play softball or baseball? Softball. I agree. <laughs> I can't hit a fastball anymore, so that's probably it. I mean, so it, if I could play baseball and be good at it? Yeah. And are we talking like major leagues here? Or just, I mean, there's a lot of over like 25 leagues. Oh. I, think I don't think I would have like... as much fun in, in that. Like if you're talking like in some alternate reality, if I could, my, you know, my dream of playing major league baseball or softball, I'm going to pick major league baseball. But if it's between like, uh, you know, 30 plus, I want to play softball. So I played in over 25 league one time when I was like 29. They had me in left field. Why? I don't know. I hadn't played baseball in 10 years. First pop fly hit to me, I shit my pants. <laughs> I couldn't believe how small the ball looked in the air. Uh, I was seriously scared. Uh, I did get a hit off a major leaguer, though. Uh, this guy was 50 years old. He used to play in the pros, and I beat out an infield hit. See, so. that would be my thing. Like, I'd be so scared in the box because you got all these guys that are like ex flamethrowers that couldn't cut it in like the big leagues or the minor leagues so they're out here playing like you know recreational ball against these other guys and just but they have no control over their fastball I'd well the <laughs> the guy I got a, he played for the Mets I think he was the coach of Nashville North at one point I got a hit off him again infield hit he was in his 50s that ball was not thrown that hard but I can say I got a hit in the book off a former major leaguer and I pissed myself in left field trying to pitch the <laughs> um, Would you rather play in the church league or my social sports? Church league. I like my social sports for what it is. Um, I, I don't like a lot of the rules that they have in place. I think the church league is a little bit more competitive than what the... Um, I don't like the time limit um, aspect like of it. I like playing in the church league. We get the nine innings and you know a couple hours of good, hard softball. Um, I mean... My social sports is great for what it is. Get the uh, get out there on Sunday, play for an hour or so, and 
No, I agree. Yeah. Um, do you think that my solution, do you think Steve gets like a bad rap? I've seen people attacking him on, on pages. Um, I like Steve, like Rich, I had him here. Uh, do you think he gets a lot of heat? People in those positions, it's it's so hard because they never get credit for the good things that they do. It's only the they bad, only yeah. get credit for the bad. And uh, you know, our our church league has the same situation with our commissioner. He's he's got to play the bad guy sometimes, but you know what? He also does a lot for the league, and he, you know, he organizes and schedules, and you know, and Steve deals with a whole slew of things that we don't even know about. Um, so yeah, I think I think people in those positions get an unfair rap for sure. Um, I mean, and I and, and just to be frank on, on on our league, I do like Alex. Do I always agree with Alex? No, but I do like him. I do like Alex as a human yeah, being. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm going to be a president for the Sunday co-ed league, oh, so yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, Bring right. it on, you're, everybody. So you're going to get the heat I'm now. I'm sure everybody's going to complain. I'm interested to hear about this. Let <laughs> me know wait. how this goes. I'll just troll them now because, like, I don't care. Um, last one, toughest one. This is blank versus blank versus blank. You can only keep one. John Maskin, Alex Lambrulis, or Anthony Amato. Oh, God, are you kidding me? <laughs> I have to pick one. I can't just the two axe two all others three get the boot. They get the boot. They're gone. That's Don't a, put your feet is, to the fire. I here. mean, this is. I'm not gonna have a, a good. Uh, I would dump Maskin. I, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but then you have to dump Maxin and Alex. Like I'm fine with dumping Maxin. It's Alex or Anthony <laughs> that I, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time with. Um, Anthony's such a cool guy. Like the, the thing I love about Anthony is. Uh, He's just, he's so chill. Like yeah. no matter what happens, he's just like he's the most level-headed person. Like th you could have like the most rage-inducing play happen right in front of you, and Anthony's just right. like, all right, <laughs> you know. And uh, uh, I love Alex too, and I love John, but uh, you know what? I think I like the level-headedness of, of Anthony. So let's go with Anthony. We'll keep all right, I'll all right. I like that answer. We want all three of them. I do. I, that's a tough question. That's not fair. Yeah, gonna... no, then that's why we ask the hard <laughs> questions here on Life for Your Ring. But, Daryl, I really appreciate you coming on today. This has been a blast. Thank you. I'll have to have you on again. Cannot wait to be on the field with you. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward for, to it. For One Church Softball. So, uh, everybody out there, again, we're saying, if you're asked to wear a mask, wear a mask. We're saying get vaccinated. But other than that, have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, let freedom ring.